Welcome to the Market Report with Vegas and Jim, supporting traders globally and achieving their financial security and freedom. I love stocks. Today's date, Monday the 17th, 2020. And we have a great watch list for you today. We're going to be looking at Jazz, J-A-Z-Z, Roku, P-A-W-M, NVDA, and one of our favorites, eBay, Miss Vegas. Well, I hope everyone's had a nice long weekend. We've had a very nice President's Day today. And so I hope you're enjoying your time with your family. And obviously we'll be back to the markets tomorrow, Tuesday, February 18. So we are looking to review the picks to get you ready for the big week. And I hope it's gonna be a big green week for many people. So let's begin. And let's talk about jazz, all that jazz. Well, jazz is jazz pharmaceuticals. And uh, this company I wanted to mention because this pharma, Mar and jazz pharmaceuticals, uh, they did announce uh, today that they have FDA acceptance and priority review of a new drug application for a drug called Libranictin in relapsed small cell lung cancer. So, I mean, this stock closed at around $140.85. So this is really more for options play or for large cap traders. And uh, we did see some activity on uh, this particular option. Um, not tons and tons, but you may want to have a look at it. The one that I see where there's a lot of open interest, and I mean, they're not that expensive if you were to get something far from the money, but this is actually not that far. I mean, the 145 calls were only 30 cents, so $30. And then we're looking, then it keeps going up in $5 increments because then you got to go to the 145, 150, 155, 160. So uh, the cheaper ones, like far from the money, like even 150, they're $10 each from Friday, 10 cents each. Um, we'll see how those react tomorrow. I won't be surprised this stock will have a little pop. Um, so, Jim, let's hear about uh, what could be a potential morning gapper on all that jazz, jazz pharmaceuticals. Well, I pulled up the yearly chart. Um, this is the TTM trend chart, along with my 9, 34, and 200 EMAs. But we had difficulty trying to break a resistance. I'm going to call this an area pivot point right here between 139.44 and 141.19. And we've pulled back to that arena right here. And I'm thinking that if we can stay in this little channel, that we can pop back up and hit a resistance. But we have had a little sell-off here, and, and every time we have a kind of a little sell-off, we have a pullback up. We did have a lower high, so we, we could probably bring this back. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the 20-day chart. But I'm calling this, like I said, 139.44 to 141.14, a yearly pivot point area. We did bust past it a couple of times pulled back and hit that again, pulled back and hit that again, pulled back and hit that again. So that's where we're going to call that pivot point. We'll take it to a 20 day. I like to break them down usually in three time frames. So right now we're looking at a support level of 139.44 to hold. Also, I want to pull this yearly chart back up or something that I failed to mention to you. We also pulled back to that 200 EMA right here. So that's a double confirmation that that could be your your solid support there at 139.44. Let's pull this 20 day back up here. And we're kind of having a little hook into close. We do have a bottom right here at 140, let me see right here, 140.23, somewhere in that area. A low support of 139.44. If we need to go ahead and break above that, we need to break this little resistance level right here at right around the 141. 68 area if we can break that we'll start breaking up to these other three resistances and they're on the chart here you're willing to start stop them at any time but i think we can take this long to 145.82 if the momentum picks up and we can stay in a little channel here but let's call this support and let's call that 145.82 or a resistance and that's all that jazz the next one we talk about miss vegas made a wonderful call on the pullback it had a great run up she, no she noticed that big bounce, and I'm going to let Miss Vegas talk about it, and it's Roku. 
Well, Roku, you know, um, they uh, had quite the run there, and uh, we could see that on Roku, it had a big pullback. So I got to say, a lot of people that were long on the stock were actually disappointed Friday to see that um, the stock had pulled back. You know, I was watching this in the morning because I thought, let's see how it does. Because sometimes in the morning, stocks will pull back and then they'll reverse completely and never look back. Well, this was a totally different story on Friday. I mean, this opened up. I mean, if you if you guys follow Roku, you know it closed at 139.05 on Thursday and it opened up at 149.19 at the open. And then it went as high as 151.20. But then all of a sudden, there was serious volume came in. We're talking over 63 million shares traded. That is, I have not seen that size come through. And oh my, I gotta tell you, I think it's been maybe the history of, of Roku from what I'm looking at here in the, like a, on a one year. I don't think I've seen that kind of volume ever on Roku. Uh, it had at one time 56 million back in May. But anyhow, we could see that the stock seriously was reversing down and the market was just selling off on Roku and uh, it went as low as 127.40. And I gotta tell you, I was watching Roku and I finally got the right confirmation. I was waiting for Roku to actually pull back. I was, you know, cause sometimes people are like, oh, we should be, we, you know, call this trade. We should have shorted this. Sometimes you need confirmation that the stock's going in the right direction because we've seen it before where people jump in and then what happens is it reverses on them and then they lose their money or they could go long on the stock and then it, you know, goes the wrong way. Um, so I needed confirmation with Roku in particular, and I was waiting for it to break down the 150. So I was looking for it to go below 150 and then, try, you know, keep going down even at 149.50 and then it was go time. So then we took Roku I did not call the trade though, uh, Jim can show you. I called the trade around 12, 19 PM Friday afternoon. And I said, let's go with the 136 puts. And the reason I picked that uh, was because first of all, I didn't want to get anything super expensive uh, contract wise because it was a Friday and these are lotto plays and these expire the same day. So I wanted to get something that, you know what, even if, even if someone just bought one, the most they'll lose is $75. And I think that that's a safe uh, stop loss. Sorry, a safe loss. Um, if they want to cut up, you know, cut the trade at half, at 50%, 20%, that's their choice. But for me, when I do a lotto play, I just go all in and I'll take 75 bucks and I'll leave it alone and I'll leave it the whole day. Just because I've seen it sometimes really explode around power hour. So, that's what happened here with Roku. This went from 75 bucks all the way over 600 and all the way over to $850 each. This was a 1000% gains, over a thousand percent gains. So congratulations to many people in our uh, members in our room that traded this and did very well. And I was really shocked that it went that much. Like I was, you know, expecting Roku I think when it was uh, pulling back, I had charted this myself. I actually charted this really well. I actually charted this down to like 129.72. That was kind of the number I was looking for. And wow, I nailed that pretty good because it went to 127.40. So that was actually not bad. Um, so you know what? I'm gonna keep watching this for a potential retracement or a potential reversal here. So Jim, let's hear about Roku because you know when stocks pull back that hard, you can anticipate uh, an, an opportunity for this to reverse. So your thoughts on Roku at this point? Yep. I was one of the biggest and I were, well, at least I think we both were one of the biggest bulls on Roku when it was down here around 50 bucks. And we had a delicious run in 2019 where it ran to 176. And then all of a sudden the bears started to get a hold of it and brought it down. And we had another good run all the way back up to about one little past 160, right around the 167 area, 168. And then here for the last two and a half months, it kind of just had a, had a trend where it was just pulling back a downward wedge. And then last week it started popping up. It started getting some attention. 
We did have pull back almost to that 200 right here at 119.43. You actually hit around 120.49. So we were kind of watching it in the room and stuff. And then last week it had that big pop. And you can see I'm going to pull up the 20 day now. We're going to have a look at the 20 day. We had that big five day run and it was starting to catch some real good momentum. And then we had one thing that I noticed on the wick that we had Thursday night in the close, we had a huge wick on it right here. And then she went ahead off, I think it was off earnings, right, Miss Vegas? Yes. And then, and then she went ahead and bounced on up and found a resistance that pre market up to right up here, 152.96. And I need to change this over here. But there's one thing that I like to identify, especially on a on a on a twenty on an hour candle, that we had a huge wick here. We had a real huge wick right here, and that support level is right down here, right around the 140. By the end of close, I'd say right around 144.50. So that was an indication, to me, if I would have known, I didn't really look at that chart at the time, that this could have been a real good short the next day, just because of the huge wick. In the base of that candle where that base is and she went ahead and ran on up and people were buying it in pre-market then all of a sudden we had these huge engulfing candles here on the hour where it pulled back to mrs vegas's call right under 130 bucks and you know she she was on it she was definitely on it all day the thing pulled back so we're, we've got this on watch maybe for a dead cat bounce but we think we could it can if it does find a support level it should be right around 128.87. If not, yeah, I think it might already start it. We'll look at it here on the daily one minute and see what happened here. And see if I can kind of, we'll make it to three minute. So we had a low, low, low support down here Friday at 127.40. I've got a 127.67 support. I'm going to turn that into a red line so I can remember that. That's going to be my, if it pulls back to that area. I'll probably jump in the trade for sure, but maybe right out of the gate, it might come up here to this 200 right here, about 133.80. So there's your $4 bounce right there from 129.80 all the way up to 138. You got to watch the action. This is going to trend either way, and I guarantee you there's probably some people stuck on this stock because of the four-day vacation. They might have went ahead and took off, didn't have no way to trade the stock, come back home on the weekend say wow man this sucker's all the way down to hit all the way hit a low of 127 started to bounce up and then pulled back into like a little descending pattern so let's see if we can get this dead cat bounce going let's see if we can bring it up to resistance and the first resistance is going to be right here i'm going to say right here right around the 132 34 the second one's going to be right here at 133.85 and then you've got you know Pretty hard sell-off here. I mean, it can bounce up off any of these places where it consolidated, but I'm going to pick this spot right here at 136.14 for a long. And the earnings were good. It's just the bears got a hold of this, and this is kind of like you got to keep in mind. This is like a Tesla, and this is going to be because these were my two shorts that I called of the year. These are going to be my bearish, bullish trades of the year: Tesla and Roku. And you see what happened to Roku on Friday. So maybe the bulls can come back in here and run this thing up about half, halfway up or at least to that 136. So low support, 127.67. Resistance to break is going to be 132.34. And we're going to try to get it up to 136.14 this week. And that's going to be Roku. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be PAVM. Okay, so I want to talk about PAVM because this is PavMed, and um, you know this company has had a commercial launch before of the Esogard uh, esophageal DNA test. Um, they also did finally get formal notification of NASDAQ continued listing, and then they also did have the grant from the FDA on PavMed from their subsidiary Lucid Diagnostics for the breakthrough device designation for their esoguard esophageal dna test now one of the things i want to mention about this company first of all i love the stock i love the the chat i lo just love the chart i love the direction of where this is all going um even though you know finally got uh the compliance uh you know continued listing compliance 
And, you know, the thing is with these biotech companies, I've talked be this before, you know, it's very expensive to do a lot of the stuff that they're doing. We are seeing definitely a new 52-week closing high, pocket pivots, volume surging on the stock. But the one thing to remember is that, you know, this company is very involved in what they call NDIR, laser, laser technology. And, um, you know, they have a lot of work that's going to be completed. They have a lot of things to probably announce before uh, the summer. So I would say by May, June, we should hear some updates. Uh, they have seven U.S. patents. They have multiple international patents as well, which when, you know, when someone has international patents, it is definitely going to tell me or gives me the impression that they're looking to obviously expand to the European market. Um, the other thing too is, you know, with this kind of technology that they're involved in, you know, not to be surprised if there's going to be some sort of interest uh, from any type of partnerships uh, in order to proceed with any kind of commercialization down the road. If that is something that they're going to get, um, you know, they did secure at one time um i think they had secured uh some sort of uh, application for liquid sensing so the company's not limited just to glucose and uh, i think they're very involved in other biomakers so this company is definitely one to watch uh i think it's a great swing trade if you definitely like longer term holds you may want to do your own due diligence and research this actual stock definitely i think that uh there's gonna be a lot more information coming from the stock like coming from the company and you could see here uh i did show jim that the ceo uh lee shan act logged he did mention that you know their pipeline does have six products focused on medical infusion hand surgery pediatric ear infections and tissue ablation so they have so many innovations and they're going to be announcing a lot of things at the summit so this is why I think that by June, we're going to hear a lot more about this company. So I really um, bullish on the stock and looking to remain long. I do have this as a swing trade. I don't have it as a core position right now, uh, but I am going to look at it a little further uh, personally myself to look to add more shares on any pullbacks. Um, but definitely, I like it. I like what they're doing. I like what they're involved in. I like that they have so many things in the pipeline and this looks extremely positive to me at this point based on everything I've read. So Jim, over to you on this amazing chart. What a wonderful run it had on Friday. It's kind of looking for a support level on here and it's kind of hard to tell. This is a beautiful run. We did have a pennant flag right up here on the top. Let's look at the yearly chart first and see if I can judge it on a daily one minute after that because it's kind of hard to tell on this hour. We did have a pullback support, I think a low, 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 low support if it decides to knife down, no lower than 188. If we can hold that 188, that'll be nice. But we have had a very nice run on this for the last couple of months. It was down here at 80 cents, created a little bottom down here, and then she started bouncing up back on, uh, um, back on the 16th of December. And ever since then, she's just had a real nice run up. We kind of had another pennant flag right here where she broke out from that pennant flag, you can see what I'm talking about. Let me go ahead and draw that up for you, for the ones that don't know what a pennant flag looks like. We'll pull her right down there, and then we'll come down here, and that's what you would call a pennant flag. And then once that outbreak came out last week, we had, I guess we had the sign back on Tuesday that this thing was gonna run. We had a big old bounce on it, and it pulled back to support right here into close at 168. The next day we had another candle base that was above the previous one. There you are. That's telling you right there that three consecutive days that this thing was getting ready to spike up. You can see we had the big engulfing one, then we had the spinning top, and then we had another little spinning top right here, and then bam, we had the big breakout on Monday. So let's pull this back to the three minute, see if I can find some support levels. I see it in the a nice little spot right in here for a support level. I'm going to pull that. Okay, it's either pull that down to that or bring it up. So let's play it safe. Let's bring it up a little bit to 225. Whoops. Wrong one. Got to put that dollar sign on there. That's what we're thinking about all the time is dollar signs. 225. 
We've got another support level right here, right around the 230 area. And then we've got one right here at 238. So this has had a wonderful run on Friday. Now there's different spots in here we can kind of look at it. So I'm going to draw these trend lines in here. We've had quite a few sending triangles on it Friday. There's a spot right there. Okay, so the way I kind of look at a lot of these breakout stocks, I like to see them pull back to that 200 EMA. And for right now, this is a moving average. It constantly moves. But right around this 223, 225 is going to be a solid support. We have a little ascending triangle right here breakout. We had the three white soldiers come in. And then they found a base where it kind of hovered. You thought you were going to get another breakout here. But another ascending triangle on them, on them 12 minutes, but it didn't happen. It pulled back right here to this recent high. So that 225 is going to be your solid support. We want that 225 to hold. Your first, second support, or your that's going to be your third. And then you've got your, well, let's make this your first support, 225. If it does decide to pull back, it's not much from that 244 high. If it could pull back to that 200, it can bounce right off of that. If not, it'll pull back to this 208 area. Keep those two in mind. 208 and 225, the resistance to break is going to be right here at 249. If we can break that 249, we're going to go higher. But I'd like to see this consolidate, pull back to that 225, and then retrace back up and break that resistance of 250, 249. And, that's, and we've had this on watch. It's not the first time we've talked about this stock. This is PAVM, and the next one we're going to talk about is a very popular stock that's really been on the move here lately, and that's NVIDIA, NVDA. NVIDIA. NVIDIA. So, NVIDIA, um, you know, obviously, they're in the technology, they're incorporated in Delaware, they're in Santa Clara, California, and they do the graphic processing units for the gaming and professional markets as well. And uh, obviously for mobile computing and automotive market. And, you know, they've been around since 1993. So what a great company. And, uh, you know, what I want to mention here about NVIDIA is that they had a lot of upgrades actually recently on Friday. You know, it did go to new lows, by the way, on Friday, but it was still green on the day. It was still up 5.6%. Um, the thing is with NVIDIA... Um, there has been a couple upgrades uh, raised by Citi uh, to $315. They had earnings per share beat by $0.23. Cents. Also, revenue beat as well on NVIDIA. So definitely, you know, the, it is maintaining as a buy rating also from Kisend, who also likes the stock. So, you know, um, the earnings are out, but, you know, we see that on uh, Friday, you know, there was a little bit of, a, obviously, a market downtick, and this was affected, but still overall green on the day with NVIDIA. So keep your eyes on NVIDIA. And, Jim, let's hear about NVIDIA because, um, you know, we're going to see that, you know, this is the GPU king for a mega trend um, stock for 2020. So let's hear about NVIDIA. We definitely want to hear about it. Let me re-race all these up here real fast, and we'll just kind of go through this real fast. This is your yearly chart. We did have a hard sell-off down here to about 132.60 last year. And then she's been on kind of a rebound ever since. She had a golden cross right here about this time. And then she's been just upgraded all the way up. And then we had that big gap up. So we do have a huge gap here. And we're going to have to hold that gap or it's going to drop back and fall back into this 272 area. But with all the upgrades and stuff on it, I think it can go higher. And with the market the way it is, we're bullish as bullish can get. Um, we do feel sorry for the people with the coronavirus that might have still a small effect on the market. But we have a support level right here at 272.35. I'm going to put a little trend line in right there. Then I'm going to put another support right here right around the 262 area. I mean, this has had a huge run. It's ran all the way from... 251.76 all the way up to 294.97 in a week period. Pull up the five-day chart, and I'll show you an example here. We had that big bounce Thursday, and then she just kind of pulled back and hit that 34 and bounced on up, creating a new high again on, 
on um, uh, Friday. And then she's pulled back to kind of just a little under a support area. I would have called support probably right in this area, right at 290. So that's going to 290.88. So that's going to be our first resistance to break. Our first pullback support can be right down in this area right here at 286. With a big jump like this, you just have to kind of think it can pull back one more day maybe and create a solid support. So I'm going to have three supports, two supports on this trade that I need to hold. I need this 283.34 to hold. I think that's going to be your solid support. People are going to start, I mean, if the bears get a hold of it and bring it down, I don't know. But that 283.34 is going to be your first solid support and then your your next one which is going to be the second one is going to be right here at 286.25 at 286.25 then I'm going to use the first support as the 200 on the five day five minute chart at 287.61 and I'm going to draw me a trend line right there so now I'm going to pull it up to the three day I mean to the one day three minute and see if I can find anything that I've missed here yeah, we got a little spot right in here we need to identify. And that's going to be on the day. See, the moving averages change. Let me, you know, I need to emphasize that a lot. They change in different time periods. This is the three minute that I'm looking at right now. And you see that 200 moved right there. And that I already had my eyes on this spot right here where it consolidated and bounced up a few times. So that's your first support. Your second support is going to be 287.61. 286.25 and then low strong buy at 283.34 if it dips on down that far. Resistance to break is going to be the 290.88 and we can bring this on up to a little bit higher for another resistance and I'm going to say right there around 292.17 and then maybe long or you can get up to a double top have a double top breakout but on a bounce like this I think this is going to be the week where it needs to consolidate. Now I saw the same thing with Tesla, and I think I'm going to see the same thing with space that's coming up because it's had too big of a bounce. Same thing happened to Tesla. It hit that almost hit that thousand. It's pulled back and it's consolidated for a week. And I think the same thing will happen to NVDA. I don't think we're going to break up and have a double top resistance to go to the moon. I think we need to consolidate for a week. We got four trading days, and then next week we're going to read justice and relook at it again. And I'm going to do a video on this one here at the end of the week. NVDA. So low support, 283.34. Resistance to break at 292.17. You're willing to stop this at any time. Copy it. Hold on to it. But always remember, it come from I Love Stocks and don't share it. And the next one, unless you're just talking with someone else about it. But uh, next one we're going to talk about is going to be another one that's going to be our last one. That's going to be eBay. Yes, and everybody loves shopping on eBay. I mean, everyone loves going to Amazon, but, you know, eBay is still a great place to uh, shop. And, you know, eBay is expanding its share buyback plans for 2020 from $1.5 billion to $4.5 billion. That's a huge, huge jump. Um, the other thing, too, is that the full year 2020, the company does expect net revenues between $9.56 billion and $9.76 billion, which is reflecting the impact of removing StubHub. Um, so that's actually good. The other thing, too, is the increase versus uh, previous guidance reflects the benefit of share buyback and particularly offsets the impact of removing StubHub. So as a result, we see that eBay has received some upgrades, in particular from Credit Suisse to $51. I actually really like eBay's chart. And I think that uh, from an options perspective or swing trade perspective, uh, I am liking that it's got support here at the 200 day levels. So from an options play, I'm probably gonna be looking at eBay this week and probably look at something for February 28. I prefer something further out. Uh, I'm going to say, well, we closed around $38.14. You know, I'm really going to look at the $40 calls for February 28. I want to give myself some time. Um, those are actually very cheap. I mean, as of now, they're cheap, but we'll see what they open at tomorrow. But they're about $9 each. So to me, you know, those are kind of, you know, I, I like to consider anything under, you know, under 20 cents, technically like a bit of a lotto play. 
So, um, you know, two weeks time out is actually pretty good for something that's nine dollars. They, I, you know, again, I'll see what they are tomorrow. If you want to get my real time alerts on this particular eBay, uh, please follow and subscribe to the stock tweets and Twitter feed. If I do trade eBay, I will definitely share in real time. So, Jim, let's hear about eBay because the chart's looking pretty good. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna boast about this about something here. Let me pull this up on a yearly. Now. Vegas knows that I am, have pretty good about my extended trend line method. It's something that I've developed over years. And I've got three different years on here. I've got, well, I'm going to add the new year, which is going to be 2000, 2020. But I have the 2018 trend lines on here. I also have the 2019 trend lines here. And I will be adding the 2000, I mean, 2020 trend lines here. But I like how these fall into place. Now this was back, this is a year ago, this is 2019. These gold lines are from 2018. And you can see how they lined up from the 2018 era all the way to the 2019 era, almost lined up perfect. From right here, even when we had that last week, you see how that stopped right there? You see how we hit like a yearly spot right in here, a yearly pivot point and it bounced on up. Anything above this area, this is, I would say, I would call, almost call this your first support, first resistance area. This down here below that line, below this line right here is going to be your support area. It's down below here, but these are 2018, 2019, and I'll be adding some 20s right now. And I put them in white. So I'm going to be drawing a 37.74, and I'm going to be drawing a 30. 7.99 right around 38 dollar area with a hard resistance right here right around 38.20 so that's what we need to break if we can break that 38.20 we're going to go up here a little higher we're going to go ahead and break i think we're we're in a bullish position right now so i'm going to call a long trade on this right around the 38 well that's not much 38.72 and we're going to bring it up here to one more spot right around the 39 O2 area. So like I said, low support, these are 2018, 2019, and now we've got 2020 on here. We've got a long ways to go to get back up here to the top. And the way this market is right now, and the way the the push of uh, small business is going, people make, I know people that make a living on eBay. So let's go to the 20 day and look at the 20 day right now. Look at the 20 day. I mean, you can see how these trend lines just almost line up with everything. So we've got, I'm going to pull back. I'm going to say that's going to be your low support, going to be right around in here somewhere. Right where that wick of that candle is. Okay. We've got support right here. So low, I'm thinking maybe right in here is where we're going to put a red line for your first support. That's going to be right there at 37.42. If that can hold, that would be great. But right now we're setting up kind of almost an ascending triangle or a kind of an upper wedge. But it's definitely showing me that maybe we might have us another breakout to this other resistance at 38.72. And that's going to be a hard resistance. If we can get past that, we're going to go up to 39. Your low support, your first support is going to be right down here right at 37.42. And then maybe your next one's going to be right down in this area right here at 3665. So let's change that into a red line also. That's going to be kind of, kind of looks messed up to you all, but with, with me, I know what I'm looking at. We do have some higher lows up here. That's, 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 and we are breaking out into ascending triangle. So if we can break 3820, we're going to go up to that new high of 3872 and 3902. We have had a nice five-day run. It could start to consolidate into a channel. Low support is going to be right here at 36.67. Your second support is going to be here at 36.93. And that first one's at 37.42. Resistance to break, 38.20. Long, $39. And that's eBay. And that is it for the market report. I do want to remind you. We do have that YouTube channel that you're going to be watching, so ring that bell and, I mean, subscribe and smash that bell for future updates. 
We're going to have a lot more educational videos on here. We're going to be small and short. Miss Vegas has been doing some on Cheddar Flow. If you're familiar with Cheddar Flow, we're affiliate with them. Watch some of them videos, and I'm going to start putting out little smaller videos too, along with our aftermarket reports that we, if we have time, we can get them up through the weekday. And also, when you're on the website, Miss Vegas had mentioned Twitter. Well, this is where you follow that. Hit I Love Stocks, look for that. Hit that follow button, and Miss Vegas is posting alerts in there all the time. We've gained another 60 some passengers on our on our Twitter page. Also on the website, we also have our stock twits, our Pinterest, and if you feel like shopping, we have a little store right there. Miss Vegas, anything yes, else you'd I like to say? Mention, uh, before we go, um, we have a president's sale coming up, so I'll put the link in the video here. You can try out the chat room for one month. And uh, we have a president's sale, so click the link in the video if you want to check it out for a half price discount. And uh, you could try for one month, and then you could see if you like it, and then you can decide if you want to join. So we have a little bit of a president sale going on. And the other thing, too, is if you want to check out the newsletter, we have a newsletter that goes out every week, and the list has just been growing and growing. We're getting into the hundreds here. And, uh, you know, the weekly watch list that we send via email only, if you subscribe, you have to go to our website, put your name, your email, click sign me up, and you're good to go. You're going to get a confirmation. Make sure you check your inbox and click confirm that you want to get the subscription newsletter, which is absolutely free. And we put our picks on there. And uh, we had a great week with the picks on that newsletter. So we're going to do a separate video on that. But if you want to get those picks, you've got to subscribe to the newsletter because we're not going to release them uh, on social media and we're not releasing them on video. Uh, so please subscribe to the newsletter to, to get that for free. So, Jim, uh, that's it for me, and I hope everyone has a great trading week tomorrow. Anything it's, else you'd nah. like to add? No, I just I hope everybody had a happy Valentine's Day, and I hope they got to watch the race yesterday, the 500. That was kind of cool. The president's plane going down over the track. I just gave me goosebumps, so that was spectacular. Just always remember, we love stocks. <laughs> ¶¶